We are currently going through some tough times with a new disease spreading throughout the world and the economy seemingly going through its worst period since the Great Depression. But there have been a few strange things that have been going on in the background of all of this chaos. That is because as we have seen throughout history, strange things tend to happen during desperate times. For example, after World War II, tensions were high between the United States and the Soviet Union, as both superpowers began jockeying for position to see who would become the world's one one true superpower. And this potential threat of a war caused some of the greatest technological advancements in history. You see, both the USSR and the United States had ballistic missiles that would launch, stay within the Earth's atmosphere, and then eventually hit their target from a few hundred kilometers away. But the distance between Moscow and Washington DC was 7,800 kilometers. So if these superpowers wanted to be able to hit each other with a missile strike, they would need a new piece of technology. So that is when the USSR developed the first intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM, in 1957. It was the first missile capable of entering suborbital space and hitting a target on the other side of the planet. But almost by accident, the USSR had developed something else. In an effort to ensure the safety of its country, the Soviets developed ICBMs and inadvertently built the technology that connected human civilization to space. Within months after the first ICBM test in 1957, the USSR used the same ICBM to launch the first satellite into space that they called Sputnik. Now today we view Sputnik as a technological masterpiece, but during its time it was viewed as one of the scariest things in the history of the western world. In fact, after the Soviets launched Sputnik, it created a worldwide panic called the Sputnik Crisis. This is when the public experienced a lot of fear and anxiety over the technological gap between the West and the USSR. You see, the United States viewed Sputnik as a serious threat to national security. So President Eisenhower said that the United States will respond with resourcefulness and vigor. And because of this, the president was able to get enough public support to create two agencies, NASA and DARPA. He was also able to dramatically increase spending on education and research and development of new technologies. And over the course of the next decade, the USSR and the United States would keep trying to one-up each other. This would eventually be known as the space race. And the space race led to innovations that would reshape our entire world. For example, DARPA created the internet as a way of sending information from one point to another in a safe and secure manner during the Cold War. Another innovation was that computers became significantly more advanced during this time because the on-the-fly calculations needed to put a spaceship onto the moon were much greater than what humans could handle. And the space race and Cold War ended up creating other spin-off technologies like GPS, CAT scans, athletic shoes, water purification, artificial limbs, and much more. So a perceived national security threat in the 1950s from both the USSR and the United States ended up catalyzing the creation of new technologies that would create a better world for the future. And that might be one of the things that we are seeing today, even though it might be happening in the background. For example, vaccines normally take about four years to develop from the time that scientists start experimenting with new vaccine ideas to the time where the vaccine is actually approved for the public use. But this time, it seems to be a little bit different. The entire world views this new virus as a serious threat, just like how most people in the world felt during the Cold War. So because of this, more funding and public support is now going towards biotechnology research in hopes of neutralizing this new threat. And here's what we are seeing so far. Well, throughout history, vaccines have worked by injecting weakened or killed versions of a virus into the person getting the vaccine. But that process takes a long time, and it was just going to take too long this time around. So around the world, researchers have begun experimenting with new ways to create vaccines that might be 5, 10, or even 20 times faster than they have ever been before. One of these methods that has shown promise is RNA vaccination. It works by injecting RNA into the cells in your body, which will then produce proteins that are identical to the pathogen that you want to protect yourself from. And even though there have been no RNA vaccines approved for medical use yet, we might see the approval of a vaccine 
occur over the next several months rather than the next several years. And that got me thinking that this new vaccine technology might be something we look back on in a few decades and view it as an amazing thing that came out of this global threat. Another piece of technology that has emerged during this pandemic is that of medical AI. You see, the Canadian company Blue Dot actually identified that there was a cluster of unusual pneumonia cases happening in China nine days before it was identified by the World Health Organization. This means that for the first time in human history, an AI was able to spot an outbreak of a disease before humans even knew about it. And if AI systems like this keep advancing, we might be able to spot patient zero of a new disease almost immediately and prevent future outbreaks from ever occurring. And AI has also begun to play a role in diagnosing new patients at near lightning speed. Alibaba claims that its AI diagnostic system has been able to accurately detect viruses using chest scans with 90% or more accuracy. And this diagnosis only takes the system roughly 15 seconds to complete. Meanwhile, on average, it takes about 15 minutes for a human to make the same diagnosis. So right now, it is possible that we are witnessing AI take its first big leap into biotechnology on a global scale. But there is also something else that is a little strange that I see going on. Has anyone else noticed how much geopolitical tensions have lowered recently? I mean, if you were told at this time last year that China would be trying to lead global humanitarian efforts and that the United States would be assisting North Korea and Iran in any sort of fashion, you would have probably thought the world was ending. But this is what happens when even longtime adversaries have a common new threat. And stories like this have occurred throughout history. One example is that during the thick of World War One. There was a battle taking place between the Germans and the Russians in 1917 Lithuania. But over the course of several days, large packs of wolves began attacking nearby villages, and then eventually they showed up onto the front lines of the battlefield. And once they showed up, the wolves began ferociously attacking the injured, which caused the Russians and Germans to call for a temporary ceasefire so that they could hunt down the wolves together. During the ceasefire, the Russians and Germans were side by side, hunting down about 50 wolves in total and chasing even more off of the battlefield. The moral of the story is that when there is a common foe, people tend to ignore the differences that they have with one another just to try their best to help each other survive. And this is a perfect example of why every president throughout history has always had their highest approval ratings during or immediately after a negative global event. For example, Trump's highest approval rating is, well, right now. Obama's took place during the Great Recession, George Bush's was right after 9-11, and Harry Truman and Franklin Roosevelt's were during World War II. The point that I'm trying to make here is that during times of crisis, people tend to come together. I mean, right now, we are seeing Republicans and Democrats work together to create a $2 trillion stimulus package that is centered around universal basic income and doesn't raise any taxes. Both sides would have thought that this was crazy just eight weeks ago, but now everyone has put their differences aside in order to try to help out the American people, even if it is only a temporary agreement. You see, sometimes good things things can come out of bad times. Even if it is really tough to see right now, we might look back on this period of time in, well, 30 years or so, as a time where the world came together, innovated, and solved the crisis together. And if you enjoyed this video, please check out my documentaries playlist on my channel, where I have a bunch of other videos just like this. And please hit the subscribe button and leave a like if you did like this video. I've just been very uh, overwhelmed with the amount of support and growth that this channel has had over the last few weeks. I mean, there's 50,000 of you that have subscribed in just the last 14 days or so, which is crazy. So thank you very much for watching. Click on my next video, and I will see you guys in a few seconds.